in Bomas, there were proposals that had been put on the table. This team, the church, the Muslim community, pastoralists, members of county assemblies, council of governors, and a host of other stakeholders took, made their contributions to what was presented in BOMAS. Those proposals were taken on board. A majority of those proposals were taken on board, as has been uh, stated here by members of this team. We appreciate that the IEBC will not be politicized and they can be an independent institution to run our elections independent of political parties. We also appreciate that the independence of the police has been captured and secured. We also ag agree that the Senate must be left with the duties and responsibilities that they have carried out so far. And we appreciate even further that additional responsibilities have been given to the Senate as uh, the Senate of Kenya is a critical institution in matters devolution and in matters taking Kenya forward. We also appreciate that the article 11A, which many members of this team canvassed on ensuring that ordinary people and their issues are part of the discussion. Finally, we have Article 11A that speaks to the economy and shared prosperity that will ensure that every citizen, especially the micro, the small enterprises, the pastoralists, the people in our farms, and the many Kenyans who ordinarily are not made part of the discussion and ordinarily are not part of the constitution, for the first time we have their issues firmly embedded in the constitution. And it is important to also note that a timeline has been placed on the actualization of Article 11A. Within one year, we should be able to implement all the issues to do with pastoralists and the marketing of their issues, matters to do with guaranteed minimum returns of all our products, ensuring that uh, the hustler economy has a fund that is going to ensure that we support micro small enterprises to grow into serious businesses. And members of this team are going to make sure that the necessary legislation to operationalize Article 11A will be put in place as soon as possible. In fact, the Honorable Ndindi Nyoro already has a bill on GMR that now is going to be anchored in the constitutional provision under Article 11A. We have also, the constitution now makes it mandatory that the president of Kenya will go to parliament every year to give a state of the nation address on the matter of shared prosperity, on the matter of attainment and progress made on ensuring that no Kenyans are left behind. That is important to as many ordinary Kenyans as it is to us and every Kenyan. Having said that, we have made, we have, we have taken the position that there is room for us to improve this document further. And we have stated categorically and respectfully that it is never too late to do the right thing.
we believe that there are a couple of outstanding issues. The judiciary is still uncomfortable, for example, with the judiciary ombudsman and the manner in which it is appointed. We all agree that accountability is central to the performance of any arm of government, including the judiciary. And we are making proposal here that it is possible for us to agree that the, um, an ombudsman be appointed in a manner that is acceptable to the judiciary, either proposed by the JSC or appointed by the Chief Justice and vetted by Parliament so that we have checks and balances. We are also saying uh, because we are, we are making that proposal because we are sensitive to the centrality of independence of the judiciary. We do not want to send any signal that we want to compromise the independence of the judiciary. Yet, we must hold the judiciary to account. So we must balance between those two rights. Secondly, we are also making the proposal on the size of parliament, and the size of the executive. Kenyans are concerned about how much it costs for them to run government. And the proposal we are making here is that we can have a win-win. We agree with the proposal that uh, appointments, or not appointments, but Senate, in Senate, 47 women are elected as senators. But we are of the view that instead of too much nomination, we should again elect women reps as we have done to National Assembly. We are saying that because we want the participation and contribution of women leaders to be substantial, meaningful, and not token uh, representation. It is in the National Assembly that discussions on matters budget, matters resource allocation, serious matters of how to take the country forward is taking place. And it is important that we have elected women in the National Assembly. So the proposal we are making is that apart from the 47 women elected in Senate, we should have 47 women elected in the National Assembly. And with that, we should be able to reduce the number of nominations. And our target, the current proposal in, 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 in BBI would take parliament all the way towards 600 members. This proposal will, will make parliament, we will cut almost 60 or 70 members if we adopt this proposal. So we are saying we can cut down the size of parliament by up to almost 60 or 70 members of parliament if we adopt this proposal we are making. And therefore, I do not think anybody can say that it is too late to make a huge saving on the kind of savings we are going to make if we adopt a proposal that reduces substantially the size of our legislature. We are also of the uh, uh, firm belief that adjustments can be made. We agree on the principle of the new 70 constituencies. Why do we say so? The position of this team all along is that in BOMAS it was suggested that these are people who will be appointed. They will just be members of parliament. Our position is nominating members of parliament gives jobs to people. 
and the public benefits nothing. Therefore, we suggested that the 70, instead of being nomination of persons, it be converted to constituencies. As we've said here, that was done. We now have 70 constituencies. All we are requesting now going forward is that the, constitu the 70 constituencies will be delimited by IEBC, that we give a window to IEBC to vary slightly up to about 20% because we agree with the original principle that there must be equality of representation. And there is a case that has been made that there are sections, counties in our country that are underrepresented. We believe that we can balance that requirement of equality in representation by allowing the IEBC to vary slightly because we have huge areas, like we have said, in Kitui that have raised concerns, in Garissa, for example, Ijara that have raised concerns, in Wajia, as Wajia South that have raised concern, in, um, in Nyeri, uh, Kieni is 52% uh, is of Nyeri County, in Nyandarwa, where we have uh, Kinangob here, which is a huge constituency, in Migori, in Kisi, and, and uh, Marsabit, you know, and, and those areas. So what we are saying is there is room if we just put a rider in the BBI text that 70 constituencies as the IEBC is delimiting the, 80 constitu uh, the 70 constituencies, they are allowed to vary to an extent of 20% so that we can take care of the areas that have raised concern. And we are not saying the areas we have just listed. I think there are, among others, there are more areas that have said that, but we do not believe there will be more than 10 or 12 areas that need to be considered. And finally, I think we have also uh, been cognizant that we do not, I think many Kenyans have been wondering why are we insisting on a consensus on process? We have been insisting on consensus on process because we know there is a way we can make this referendum win-win. We know there is a way we can accommodate everybody. We know there is a way we can remove this referendum from being win-lose. There is a mechanism that can allow us to vote on the issues instead of the personalization of the referendum. We do not want the, re the referendum to be so-and-so versus so-and-so, because so-and-so is leading this place, is leading no, and so-and-so is leading yes. That, in my opinion, is backward. In fact, we are reducing the referendum to something else. We can make it much more progressive by providing a mechanism for Kenyans to vote on the issues. We have, as a team here, agreed that we will support the proposal by CIOC in Parliament to provide a mechanism in the referendum where Kenyans can vote on issues, not just a yes-no referendum. Maybe I will explain a bit. For example, there are Kenyans who have no issue with 35% going to the counties, and they want to vote yes. But there is a Kenyan who has a problem with the judiciary ombudsman. He wants to vote no. Why do we force a Kenyan to vote for something he does not want, or to vote against something he wants? It is practically possible for us, for us to give an opportunity for Kenyans to vote yes for resources going to the county and to vote no for what he doesn't want or she doesn't want. And that is the opportunity we are saying should be made available to Kenyans.
What will that do? The opportunity to allow Kenyans to vote on issues will completely remove these us versus them no yes referendum contest. Completely. It will remove it. There will be no need for us now to have teams campaigning yes this way, others campaigning no that way. We will then focus on issues, which are the issues Kenyans will vote for, which are the issues Kenyans will not vote for, and the reasons why, and we can always take this forward. And let me say for the record that it was okay for us to vote no yes in the last referendum because we were enacting a new constitution. So the vote was between the current and the old. Now we are not voting for the whole constitution. We are voting for articles of the constitution. So it is perfectly in order for us to assemble articles that are together and vote for them uh, separately. And that's all we are, we are asking. We are also saying as responsible Kenyans and as responsible leaders that um, and as, as responsible leaders we are saying we are in the middle of a pandemic that has ravaged our country many Kenyans have become victims of the corona COVID-19 virus Many Kenyans have, have lost loved ones. Some have gone through untold suffering, including members present here in, in hospitals. Many Kenyans are not able to afford, uh, you saw, I think it is in the media, that it costs about 21,000 every day. Very few Kenyans can afford that kind of uh, uh, costs. And the attendant issues of a financial crisis that has been occasioned by the corona uh, pandemic. We want a discussion, a candid discussion. Our proposal is we should commit every resource that is available towards tackling the corona pandemics, alleviating the serious uh, crisis in our, uh, in, in our economy, making sure that in January there are face masks, there are desks, there are facilities for our kids in school in January, and that there is a possibility for us to take this referendum together with the election in 2022. We want to offer a discussion. We are not saying that it is cast in stone. We want to be persuaded why why is it not possible for us to do it in 2022? Our proposal is we can do it together with the election in 2022. So these are proposals we are putting on the table in good faith. And we are requesting the other stakeholders. We are requesting the other stakeholders uh, we are requesting the other stakeholders to give us, to, uh, to engage with us so that we can responsibly be able to prosecute this initiative together. Um, many of you may want to ask me um, Maybe Kenyans will get confused. Maybe how will they vote for the different items? But let me answer it this way. When Kenyans go to vote in an election, they vote for MCA, Member of Parliament, Women Rep, Senator, Governor, President, six positions. Right? In the six positions they vote for, there are 10 candidates for one position, 15 for another. They are literally voting from a group of almost 100 people. But they still manage to identify who they want. 
So if we make this referendum six or seven questions, independent questions, there is absolutely no difference with how Kenyans vote when they go for election. So it is absolutely reasonable for us to isolate five, six, seven items, itemize them, and Kenyans can vote independently like the way they do in every general election. Nimeelezo ya kwamba nifanye summary kidogo kwa lugha ya Kiswahili. I'm not good at it. I don't know. Nani ata? Imetosha, eh? No, lakini wacha niseme hivi. Tumefanya mkutano wa kundi letu hapa wa bunge 146 na senators saba pamoja na viongozi wengine wengi walio hudhuria kikao hiki wengi wetu hapa ni wa kutoka vyama mbalimbali kwa sababu jambo hili la kubadilisha katiba sio jambo la chama ni jambo ambalo linahusu wa Kenya kwa jumla tumekubaliana na um, yale mambo ambayo yameshughulikiwa yame, yame kutoka BOMAS mpaka KICC tumeona ya kwamba kuna mambo wa Kenya stakeholders mbalimbali walitoa maoni yao na mambo kadha yamechukuliwa yame na sasa ni imewekwa katika katiba ambayo imependekezwa kati ya mambo yale ni kuondoa mambo ya Eh, shida ya, ya polisi mambo ya IBC imewachwa eh, hakuna hakuna matatizo tena eh huyu duale acha tu niseme hii Kiswahili ni sawa mambo yale mengine yote yameshughulikiwa lakini tumesema ili tuweze kutembea pamoja kama wa Kenya kuna mambo machache ambayo pia ni ya muhimu bado kuna utata mambo ya judiciary na independence ya judiciary tuko na mapendekezo ya vile kuondoa utata huo tuko na maneno ya representation ambayo tumekubali kwamba sehemu za wakilishi bunge zingine sabini ziundwe lakini tumependekeza ya kwamba asilimia ishirini IEBC kamati ambayo inasimamia uchaguzi wapatiwe nafasi asilimia ishirini waweze eh, kurekebisha ndio tuweze kushughulikia sehemu ambazo wametoa malalamiko vile vile tumekubaliana ya kwamba bunge wa Kenya wengi wanalalamika kuhusu eh, kiasi ya pesa ambayo itatumika katika kuendesha bunge mpya na tumetoa mapendekezo ya kwamba tunaweza kupunguza kutoka ile bunge BBI imependekeza tunaweza kuondoa wabunge wengine karibu hamsini sitini ili tuweze kupunguza size ya bunge na kupunguza pia gharama ya wananchi katika mambo ya kuendesha mambo yao na mwisho Tumesema vile vile hatutaki kwenda kwenye kura ya maoni naitwa kura ya kura ya maamuzi sorry hatutaki kwenda kwenye kura ya maamuzi ya kusema tu ndio ama la bunge letu la Kenya inatengeneza sheria ambayo itasimamia mambo ya referendum na hiyo E, sheria inapendekeza ya kwamba kuwe na kura katika articles ama e, vipengele tofauti hakuna haja ya kusema ndio ama la kama unapenda mambo ya 35% asilimia 35 kwenda kwa county unaweza kusema ndio kama kuna kipengele ingine hauamini unaweza kusema la na inawezekana tuwe na maswali kama tano, sita ama saba ili tusiende katika kukataa 
ili hali uko na mambo ambayo ungependa yapite kule ndani ama kukubali ili hali uko na mambo kule ndani ambayo ungependa isipitishwe kwa hivyo tumekubaliana ya kwamba sisi wabunge walio hapa wataunga mkono sheria iliyo bunge ya kamati inayosimamia mambo ya kutekelezwa kwa katiba ya kioni ili tuwe na nafasi ya e, referendum ambayo itakuwa na maswali kuzidi moja katika vipengele tofauti na vile vile tumesema kwa sababu ya hali ya uchumi iliyoko katika taifa letu la Kenya na kwa sababu ya matatizo ya ugonjwa wa corona wa Kenya wengi e, hawawezi kujimudu kulipa gharama ya matibabu tuko na matatizo watoto wetu Januari kurudi shuleni lazima masks zinunuliwe madawati zinunuliwe eh, expansion ya facilities katika shule ishughulikiwe tulikuwa tunapendekeza hii million billion tano. badala ya kutumika kwenye referendum tuweze kutumia hiyo pesa kushughulikia janga la corona na mambo ya uchumi ambayo iko chini kwa saa hizi na tuweze kupiga kura hii ya maamuzi pamoja na uchaguzi 2022 hiyo ndio mapendekezo yetu na tunawauliza ndugu zetu wengine tuweze kuongea tuweze kutafuta uiano na maelewano na makubaliano ili tuweze kutembea pamoja kama wa Kenya sisi tunaamini inawezekana hii um, eh, draft constitution proposal ambayo imewekwa inaweza kuwa republished tena ikichukua maoni inaweza kuchapishwa upya ili ikichukua maoni kama sisi wote tutakubaliana twende barabara hiyo asante sana si nimejaribu kiasi Aya. Sasa nitachukua maswali. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Tuko sawa. Uh, mimi naitwa Steven Letoa Citizen TV. Uh, the proponents of the BBI referendum uh, have said on Wednesday last week that the window for more amendments was already closed on that day and that even today and the other day uh, more amendments proposals from the Ilchamus community as well as from Mombasa were rejected and that the signature collection is already ongoing number one uh, with your new uh, you know uh, re recommendations uh, that you've brought forward are you then seeking a suspension of the ongoing signature collection drive? And number two, the same, uh, the Secretariat has released timelines to have the referendum conducted before or by, uh, by June next year. Should all these uh, de uh, demands that you've made today not be made, including the consensus, are you going to flush the no card? I, I'm sure you are not new to the issue that uh, the door is closed. Even in Bomas, we were told the, the door is closed. But our position is that it is never too late to do the right thing. We want, we are, this is our country. There are people who are saying it is late. How, how is it late? We are, what, what, is the, what, is the, what is the crisis? What is, what is the problem? You know, this is our country. I want anybody to discount the proposals we are making here on the size of parliament, on the need for consensus on the ombudsman, on the need for consensus on the, on the, on the, on the, on the constituencies, if, if they are not reasonable. You know, you can only discount them that they are not reasonable. But if they are reasonable, honestly, all it will take is to republish the bill and, and we go to the referendum. We have absolutely no problem with the collection of signatures. It's the easy path. That is just a process issue. What is more important is the content of what we are going to vote for. And that is our concern at the moment. Our priority at the moment is to improve the content of the text that will be voted for. 
the collection of signatures is the easy part. And, and maybe just to answer your question further, to say, you know, let us not be simplistic and say, are you going to vote no or yes? You know, that's a very, that's a very simplistic approach. If we had taken that approach, we would not have made the improvements we have made from BOMAS to uh, KICC. You know, many people were pushing that uh, the people who have uh, better ideas should go and join the no team. We think that is not, that, that's not, that, that's actually reckless, you know. It, it, is, it is not, it's not right. I think consensus requires that we listen to one another. In fact, building bridges means you have to reach out to the other side. I think it is even against the spirit of building bridges for anybody to shut a door on a good idea. Yes, my good friend. If you listen to our statement, we said women representation must be to as great an extent as possible elected. We want to discourage nominations. That we should be, even if we are feeling the two-third gender rule, it must be elected representatives, women elected representatives. And we have suggested that let us have a conversation after the election of 47 women and the election in the, in the Senate and 47 women in the National Assembly, we should have a conversation on Article 81, which, which, says, which, which, which uh, discusses affirmative action. We should have a conversation. What do we do? How do we make sure? Uh, do we make it progressive? or do we have additional women nominated to the National Assembly? That's the conversation we are inviting others to contribute because we do not have the monopoly of good ideas. We believe that this should be open to a discussion with other stakeholders. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Muraidi. Uh, I think you didn't, uh, you didn't, you didn't, you, you, you did not uh, hear properly what we said. What we said, the conversation we are talking about is about reducing the current members of parliament from 600. And I have told you the proposal we are putting on the table, in whatever form, will bring down that number from the number that is being proposed under the BBI arrangement. A minimum of 60 MPs will be slashed out by adopting the proposal we have made, even if we nominate the rest of the women to fill the two-thirds gender rule. So our proposal from the start will cut down the number of MPs that is being proposed currently in the BBI uh, document. That's number one. We, are, we, we can even reduce it further, the size of parliament. We can even reduce the size of parliament further if we have a discussion about Article 81. Yeah? So that, that's, the, that's the position. And then uh, finally, 
Relax. Relax. Finally, um, you have said that uh, you know you, you always want to go to this yes no. You know, what what we are saying is we are having a conversation, right? We are having a conversation, and when you are having a conversation on building consensus, you don't jump to conclusions. You know, we we in any case. When we pass the law in parliament that gives options for citizens, why would anybody want to oppose uh, uh, the document? Because there will be no need to oppose the document in its whole because you can isolate the issues that you want to vote for and you can isolate the issues that you want to vote against and it will just be uh, as good as that. So there will be no, uh, the camp of yes and the camp of no will not exist. There will be people voting for different things in different, I know you are used to the old yes, no. We can make it better. Yes. And uh, my brother Lito asked a question and the same question, we don't have an answer. In, in the event that the BBI secretary remains stubborn and they don't include the proposals that you have, what are the step or the, the step are you going to take as the group? Why don't you allow them? You know, why don't you? Why, why do you want to, to, to? Why don't you allow them? Even if even if they say whatever they are saying, the, the, it has been said before. But you know, there is nobody who will resist. There is nobody who will resist what is right. The people on the other side are reasonable people. They are also intelligent. That is why they took on board the suggestions that were made by stakeholders after bombers, even after they said nothing will be changed. So they are reasonable and intelligent people, and they should be able to look at the merit of what we are saying. If it makes sense, we are comfortable that in their intelligence and reasonableness, they should be able to take on board what we are saying. Mwisho. Uh, Bonadipi, we've been patient, we've lis listened to, apart from waiting, to Meskia's statement in Mesoma for one hour. I can see the leaders want to leave when we are just seeking clarification. So I don't know what is the hurry, but, uh, but since you are the host, maybe you can remain with us. <laughs> since you are the host, maybe you can remain with us until we get it clear. I have two quick questions I want to know from you. We are lost. We are beating around the bush. To borrow the ages, what he said, we are circumlocuting. Can we get it clear in the event that uh, you are pushing for consensus? Yesterday we were given an update that it's over 2 million signatures. The window for signature collection is Friday, which means the next stop is the verification. In that, in the case there is no room for consensus. Are you for yes? Are you for no? In the event that the consensus you are putting for, you are rooting for is not. The second question, what you are talking about, the Kioni CIOC, it's a referendum bill that is already in court. Even if there was, it has already been suspended. And even if it was not uh, suspended, that, would, that is what would give us a referendum law. Now, uh, what we are having is the referendum question that has been framed under the Constitution Amendment Bill 2020. So could we address ourselves to this one? Because what Kion is rooting for is a bill that maybe will come into law to have a referendum law in the country. To have your facts uh, on that particular issue, Hayemba, with a lot of respect, your facts are not together. The, we have actually two referendum laws in Parliament, two of them, bills. We have two bills in Parliament, one by the Kioni Committee, one by the JLAC, right? And all of them are actually almost at the tail end, yeah? In fact, the Speaker was supposed to give a ruling on uh, harmonizing the two. So the reality of having a multiple choice referendum is real. So you need to relax. The referendum is not happening next week. If at all, this referendum will be happening in April next year or some other place at the earliest. So relax. So 
That is one. So when we talk about the possibility of us having a multi-choice referendum, we are not talking about something in space. We are talking about a reality. And members of the committees are seated here. And they have given us assurance that it is possible for that bill to be finalized in, uh, in time for us to use it for a referendum. Are we together, Haemba? So, again, we are used to this yes, no, win, lose, or all, all or nothing. Please relax. There is another way of doing things called win-win. And that is what we are trying to fashion. It is not customary. It is not usual. That's why you have a problem with it. Because you are not used to, you are just used to, oh, are you yes or are you no? Yeah? Are we together, Hayemba? So what we are saying, we want to improve our country, my friend. When you find me, you know me, normally I take uh, positions uh, and, I, uh, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I'm very clear about. But you see, I am deputy president today. And I have the interests of every Kenyan. There are people who support uh, us and they want a real choice to express themselves. There are issues they agree with, they want to vote for. There are agree issues they don't agree, agree with, they want to vote against. And there is a real possibility for us to give them a chance to do that. Why do you, Hayamba, want us to deny them a chance and to tell them, go vote no or yes? Why? Honestly. You should... You, I, I, <laughs> Hayamba, with a lot of respect, you should be helping me make the case that there is another way of doing this where we do, not, we do not divide the country, yes, no, we can actually vote on the issues. Okay, okay, good people. Asante sana. Asante sana. And uh, I wish you well, Asante sana, and uh, all the best in whatever you're doing.